There are many stories from the 1500s of Western travelers exploring Southeast Asia who came across what they described as thousands upon thousands of fireflies in the trees, all flashing on and off in synchronicity at one, uh, with one another. How is this possible? Well, scientists such as Steve Strogatz have been studying patterns of synchronicity which happen in complex networks of all sorts in everything from rainforest to the human brain. Um, as it turns out, he found the answer by looking at a different type of network, society. I'm sure you're all aware of the Six Degrees of Separation, popularized by the game uh, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. The idea is simple, that you can connect any one person with any other in society through roughly six people. Uh, in the 1960s, social scientists experimented to see how quickly they could link people together randomly. As it turns out, it takes roughly six. Several decades later, Strogatz would use this, this small world pattern to help explain how relatively stupid bugs can synchronize their behavior. It turns out that complex networks of all sorts can perform enormous feats of synchronicity because it most often doesn't take more than a few links to connect any one node to the next, regardless of how far apart they may be. Um, so what do fireflies and cities have in common then? Uh, they both involve complex networks. What's different about our understanding of cities is that they don't quite understand how they work. Uh, so what do, uh, let me explain with a game. Say you want to go to a bar like ABK Live. Um, you always know it's going to be busy, so you want to try to predict a time when other people aren't going to want to go. Um, well, the challenge to this game arises when everyone else or a majority of others think the exact same way you do. So, um, this is called the bar problem. And as we see with fireflies, it can happen more often than you might think. The challenge to understanding how cities work is that they involve networks of people that learn and adapt quite often and spontaneously. They build new homes and shops over existing structures. They re repurpose and reorganize spaces according to their changing needs. Uh, as soon as you can say, as soon as you uh, say, um, as a government planner, begin to plan and implement something, either people's needs begin to change, or too many of them end up wanting the exact same thing. One thing we know about cities is that in order for them to be more sustainable, they need to be dense, or at least denser than many of Canada's or Canada's mid-sized cities, such as London are. Uh, as more and more people move to cities, we need them to work. But in need of, uh, uh, in order for dense cities to work, for people, uh, people must learn to adapt well within them. Um, and in order to do this, uh, we need diversity, so that we don't all end up wanting the same things, like in the bar problem, and uh, can share different experiences about how to make our lives better. Uh, density comes with a balance of two things, planning and messiness, um, or order and disorder. We can plan our way out of messy cities, often those pictured as unpleasant or scary, or we can allow for a degree of messiness. Some of the best cities to live in are very messy. Toronto is a great example of messiness, of how new and old buildings, rich and poor people meet each other in weird and wonderful ways. Old industrial neighborhoods near the lake now involve a mix of homes and offices and old and new buildings standing side by side. Various parts of Toronto are filled with examples of messiness of which most do not come out of planning, but adaptation, informed by diverse needs and wants. Now, all of this is abstract, I know, but what I'm trying to say is that cities need a mix of new and old, rich and poor, and that we can't plan for it all. We need mixed zoning, and a little unplanning in order to encourage diversity. What can city governments do? They can ensure that the arteries of the city work well because that's how, it, that's how people mingle, share experiences, and discover new ideas and opportunities. Public spaces and transportation are vital to allowing people to bump bodies and heads. And this is the biggest challenge facing mid-sized Canadian cities like London. Urban sprawl has not only spread people out, so population density is low, but it has a transportation structure which is not terribly conducive to moving people out of various socioeconomic backgrounds around effectively. 
We must re reimagine the city, and to do so, we need to allow for a little messiness and disorder in our city neighborhoods and on our city streets. Thank you.